Good morning. I'm Annabelle Fraser, and I'm the president of MIAGLI and the editor-in-chief for The Wave. I'm Helen Totten, and I am the treasurer of GLI. We also have Jessica Babcock here with us. Would you be able to tell us a bit about yourself? Jessica? Sure. I'm the Reverend Dr. Jessica Babcock, and I run or am the priest at St. Mark's Episcopal Church here on the island, and that is the gorgeous white church that you see, <laughs> the first church you see as you come on to Collier Boulevard and over the Jolly Bridge. Uh, would you be able to tell us about what your typical day is like? What do you do? Golly. So um, I am basically uh, a CEO of a nonprofit, which happens to be a church. So I do administration and I run my staff. Um, and uh, I also serve, you know, on the other side of this job is the uh, taking care of people side. So yeah. that's what I'm about, taking care of people. So uh, that means that I am at the hospital a lot when people go to the hospital. Um, to, I go to visit with them, pray with them, listen to them, hold their hand, because a lot of times they're scared. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I do a lot of death and dying, obviously, um, as people go out of this world. Mm -hmm. um, I'll also visit rehab centers, hospice centers, um, anywhere that our people are that need a visit or any place that calls that says that they need an Episcopal priest, I go. So my day can be very erratic, but that's what I love about it because it's not like the yeah. same. Yeah. The only thing for me that's the same every week is Sunday because that's when I'm preaching. So I'm also yeah. a public speaker. So it's kind of that, that CEO of a nonprofit yeah. Running a church, administration, public speaking, and taking care of people. Mm -hmm. And so, but but I love it, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't have a lot of free time, but when you love what you do, it doesn't matter because it doesn't feel like work, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Right. That is so impressive. Thank you so much for joining us. So were there any defining moments within your faith that you felt inspired you to pursue your position within the church? So I'd, I'd always been interested in being an ordained priest. And to do that, you have to go to school for a really long time. <laughs> so, um, but my call came late in life. But when I think back on my life, right, I was a Peace Corps volunteer when I was young, when I was 22. Mm -hmm. And when you're doing Peace Corps, you're working internationally um, with countries that are um, developing nations, right? They don't have a lot of resources. Yeah. I love that. And um, at one point, I guess later in life, um, I realized um, that work I was doing in Cuba for the church was exactly the same thing. And that what I was called to do as a priest, an ordained person, right, was also outreach, um, mm -hmm. mission to the world around me here, but also internationally. So it was like my life kind of came together, Yeah. right? And um, the other thing that I feel really strongly about is that um, a lot of people in the world have been hurt by church one way or the other or left yeah. out by church mm -hmm. um, and so it's really really important that um, that we as a church heal that and yeah. so the Episcopal Church is very special because we welcome all people and we welcome all people um, into leadership roles in the church that's what I've heard right. I'm not personally very well versed in religion, but the one thing that I have heard about your church, especially, is that you are very right. inclusive and yeah, do an amazing right. job. At thank that. you, thank you. Going to that yeah. church, I've always loved how like there was at a point we had like three different female priests, and right. I just thought that was so unique. Absolutely, because right. a yeah. lot of churches, you know, they just don't allow that at all. Yeah. So to be able to see that is just really it's inspiring. It's just right. Amazing. It is neat to watch, <laughs> and and people will come in, um, especially um, if you're if you're Catholic, and they'll come in and go, "Wow, they're they're too." women on the altar, are they priests? Yes, they are priests mm -hmm. in the yeah. Episcopal tradition. How do people react to the fact that you are so welcoming in the churches as it is? Like, do you have a, any, like, backlash ever from that? Um, th there were people, well, let's see. That's kind of a different question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll start with this. When I came five years ago to St. Mark's, there were people that left the church because I was female. Really? Right. So, because I wasn't the male, typical male, mm -hmm. and that's what they wanted. Um, and that still happens all over the yeah. United States. Is that what is traditional in the church? Um, well, it has been in all churches. You know, you go to a Baptist church, it's gonna be male. Um, and only, I guess, us in the Methodist church, Presbyterian church, and the Reformed Lutheran church, you would see female, but not necessarily in the primary leadership role. Mm -hmm. So, that, that was interesting for me in my call. What was the question, Helen? Uh, just about how have you ever faced any um, like adversity with 
being so welcoming and like, right. like you had talked about being well welcoming. I mean yeah so okay so the other side of that I mean here I am you know the first woman to have this position at this church mm -hmm. um, and then have people leave as soon as they got to know me things got back to normal and it just started to grow um, I guess because people feel loved and welcome when they're there that's not about me necessarily I'm sure it's leadership sure but yeah it's about the people there yeah. right mm -hmm. Um, I have had backlash from the, um, what you would call, well, let's, let's just say it. Um, I've had people come into my office and say, would you marry a gay couple? And I have to say to them, yes, but the requirements are the same of any parishioner. You have to be here, you need to be a member, or you need to be the daughter or son of a member. Mm -hmm. um, you have to go through counseling with me, and then we can get married. Yeah. So yes, I am able to do that, but I've had people come in and ask me that question and then leave the church. Really? And that's fine. If, they, if that's not in their faith, mm -hmm. I believe, because I follow Jesus Christ, and Jesus welcomed everybody yeah. that I'm patterning my life and the church's life after that. Absolutely. Welcome is really important, and you have to mean it. It can't be, oh, you're welcome, but you can't do this. Yeah. It has to be all inclusive. Everybody yeah. is a child of God, and everybody, anybody and everybody is different from the other person, and we, mm -hmm. the difference is what makes it fun. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. So I know you spoke a little bit about leadership and your personal leadership strategy. Mm -hmm. How would you personally choose to define leadership? So I think good leadership is what I would call servant leadership, where if you take a look at your staff, the leader is there to guide, but to ensure that they have the resources to do their job and the coaching to do their job, right? So in that way, I'm the servant to them, mm -hmm. right? But it's also about um, the way I lead is through collaboration. And that means anybody that wants to be involved in a process of doing something is welcome, um, we're a team, we do it together, not one person is more important than the other, um, until it gets to the point where people cannot agree on something, and then I have to make that definitive decision, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But it's servant leadership and collaboration. It works every time because people feel respected and loved. Perfect. So how do you feel that your faith has strengthened your leadership within the church and outside the church? Oh, golly. Um, I need my faith to lead in this place, right? Mm -hmm. Because think of it as a huge family like and think of the people in your family that you don't really want to be around maybe some extended family or people that don't get along because of politics or whatever right well a church is like a huge f family and every family has dysfunction right so my faith informs my treatment of people in that I don't I don't have to like somebody but I do have to love them I have to truly love them I don't have to like them I don't have to agree with them, right? Yeah. But I have to respect them. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so in doing all this, where do you feel that the most um, support comes from? How do you how like how do you feel supported when doing all of this? So um, you know, every every church, no matter what church you are, what denomination you are, has mm -hmm. some sort of a board. We call that a vestry, and those folks are elected to to help lead the church, and I make sure that they carry the weight you know, with me. And that's how I feel, you know, supported and loved. And then eventually you, you make friends, you know, if you, if you're at a church long enough, you make really dear friends. Yeah. And that's also part of that support. Plus, um, office staff for me is really critical. They're very loving people and they take good care of me and I take care, good care of them. So yeah. that's the support. And then family. Um, my kids are out of college now, so everything's kind of changed, right? Mm -hmm. It used to be, I really used to rely on them to keep me grounded and be at home. They're not anymore. So it's really just husband and my dog, Luke, who's a beautiful <laughs> golden retriever. And so I always know that I have to leave the office. I can't work myself to death because Luke needs me, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, and my husband needs me. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So because female leadership positions are not common in the church traditionally, like you said. Right. Do you, have you noticed or observed any differences in leadership style or just in general between you and your male counterparts in the sure, church? Sure, sure. Um, I, I am, and I'm going to have a hard time coming up with an example. Um, women are treated differently. 
Um, and the way that I see that in, in church and all the churches, Episcopal churches that I've been in, is that um, we are asked to do things that men would never be asked to do, to, to do like attend all the women's meetings. A man would never do that. Um, bake a pie, you know. Um, uh, we are often um, given, you know, attaboy, you know, kind of responses that um, you would never give a male pastor um, because the, the attaboy is not, is not just, oh, that was, that was good. It's more of a, I'm surprised that you can do this yeah. kind of attaboy. Yeah. yeah. So it's very, it's very different in how we're spoken to. Now, some of that goes away the longer that they know you and the more they trust you. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Now, this is um, in Florida, where I'm talking about, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm from Alabama, so in the southeast, definitely a problem. As you go up into uh, Michigan and, and into uh, New York State and, and the northeast and the north, it's more typical to have a woman leading a congregation. Really? And probably less problems, I don't know, but I do think we're treated differently than our yeah. male counterparts, and I know we're paid less. Um, and that's just something that with, with each generation, it gets better. Right. Yeah. How do you pr how do you choose to navigate that? Um, you stay you stay strong, mm -hmm. and with this church, I have not. I've I've been really blessed. I have not even had to ask for one thing. They just say, "Here, we want to pay you more," you know, because <laughs> yeah. they love me. They want me to stay around. Yeah. But in in other places, um, you you really have to be strong, mm -hmm. and say, "This is my value that I bring. This is the load that I carry, and and what I add." And you have to stay strong. Um, and ask for what you want. A lot of times women won't ask for what they need or what they want mm -hmm. when uh, their male counterpart is very bossy about it. So yeah. we have to be bossy yet kind. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Bossy yet kind to get what you want. But you got to ask for it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I know that in our previous interview with Casey Lucius, she acts like actually kind of went into what you just talked about. She was talking about something with interviews or... Yeah. Um, I believe it was internships mm -hmm. at college. And she right. was like, people often don't realize that it was only the men that were asking for the paid internships and women didn't ask. Okay. Right. So that's why they, you know, like right. as women, I feel like we're often conditioned to, you know, stay quiet and reserved. Yeah, and not, what we can get. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Right. right. But it's people that like you and like her that kind of push through that boundary. And that's mm -hmm. very inspiring. And right. Very and even like interviewing. Mm -hmm. Um, like women don't like to toot their own horn, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I work with a uh, clergy coach, and I would highly recommend this for anybody um, that's going to go into business um, where you've got to be that strength, right, mm -hmm. um, to get a, get a business coach. Mm -hmm. And one of the things my coach taught me was how to tell people what I am really good at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. um, straight out. And I think women, women hold that back. Mm -hmm. we're, more, we're more reserved. Um, for whatever reason, but we've got to get over that. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So what do you believe are the benefits of including more women within religious leadership positions? Oh, goodness. Well, women uh, in my book, um, and this is a gross generalization, okay, mm -hmm. but I think that we are really good nurturers, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and um, we're known for that. And sometimes men like that. Um, some men don't. Um, but in this case, um, you have to be nurturing and loving um, because your, your primary job is to care for people and to preach God's word. Uh, those are the two things. If you do those two things, you'll do well in a church, um, even if you're a sloppy administrator, which I'm not. But, um, yeah. So, yeah. I th does that answer your question? Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. This is Again, I have never really gone to a church, so mm -hmm. this is, it's so interesting to see, yeah. you know, especially coming from someone like you, who you would not traditionally think of being in a leadership position in a church. Right. It's so inspiring right. and just yeah, and it's really, really cool. It's really cool to hear, like, going to your church, and, I, you know, I, I know you preach every Sunday, but I didn't really realize how much extra comes with it and all the visits you do and all right. that. And um, I just wanted to ask, too, if there's any, um, like, advice you had, because I know you said that um, you started out just doing the Peace Corps and you didn't really know what you wanted to do exactly and right. you didn't know about going into priesthood. So do you have any advice for people that might not, 
they might not right I think I think the world tells us that we have to know what we want to do when we're like 18 years old and going into college right (laughs) well that's just not true I mean this is my third career third career okay and I think that is normal as you grow right yeah um, it wasn't in like our grandparents or great grandparents day because they, you worked for one company and you had a pension. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, like I'll give you an example. So I came out of college and um, I wanted to be a corporate trainer. And so I got a master's in adult education, right? Um, and I did that for a long, long time and developed training. But I developed training on really technical things and did all the coursework for it, the written coursework for yeah. it, right? Using my technical team. Okay, so that was taking something that was really complicated, um, uh, Microsoft servers or Java, and putting it down on paper to teach it, right? Yeah. So that's, that's complicated, right? So then, you know, at some point we moved and I became a real estate broker and doing sales. And that's where I learned to ask for what you want. If you want to <laughs> close a deal, close a deal, yeah. okay? This is the third career, but I've taken everything from the beginning. I use all of that and what I'm doing now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the benefit of not doing one thing your whole life, one, I think it can be boring. Yeah. Um, the benefit of not doing the same thing your whole life is that you grow those skills. Absolutely. And then I can relate, I relate to my parishioners because I've had that working life. Yeah. yeah. And I've raised kids selling real estate. Yeah. You know, so. Mm-hmm. Everything connects so together. I, yeah, so yeah. it all connects together and all that past helps me do what I'm doing now as opposed to as opposed to somebody that's ordained at 22, 23, and they've only worked in the church. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I think I just come with a better skill set because of that. So you don't need to know what you're going to do. Yeah. What you're going to do is through life is a process of elimination. You're attracted to this, so you do this, right? (laughs) You get rid of the stuff you hate. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's normal. And it's okay to say, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you do for college if you don't know? Well, you, you get an English degree, or you're really good at writing, or you're really good at math, or whatever, you start somewhere with what you love to do, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. And would you say you've always had a passion for your faith? I have. I've been lifelong Episcopalian. Okay. So, um, but I haven't always attended church. You know, I didn't attend church in my 20s. Yeah. Um, I thought for a while that your church was kind of crazy. Yeah. And then realized, no, church is a family. It's yeah. a community. It's all pure love and outreach and service mm-hmm. to other people. Yeah. yeah. And if you want a good life, serve others yeah yeah and it's such a shame too because i know like you said earlier so many people often turn away because of people unlike you correct who, you know correct aren't necessarily inclusive enough or however you would describe that as well yeah so exactly it, so absolutely. you know we have we do have a problem in the country right now with mm-hmm. um the far right mm-hmm. um and uh that is pushing into our politics which isn't right because yeah. we, i do believe in the separation of church and state mm-hmm. But um, the church uh, should never hurt anybody. That's counter. It's counterproductive and counter to what Jesus taught. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and I, I've always been very appreciative of that. Um, again, going to your church because even though there's been times that you know I've, I've never considered myself to be like very extremely religious, but mm-hmm. I still always feel like comfortable and safe at the church. And right. it's just it's just a family, you know. Even if I'm going there like not like just to go and sit at the service yeah and you know I'm still getting yeah. such a good benefit from it yeah absolutely so I think that's another thing with life as you grow older you figure these things out for yourself you figure yeah. out you know what you believe for yourself and you have to do that that's your work to do it's not somebody telling you what to believe or how to behave and that's the way the church has done it for centuries right you must do this you must think this and if you're not doing this you're out of the club uh, we don't do that. And so um, people, uh, you know, it's, what I think we have is a, a place where people can be themselves and be free to be themselves and express themselves and still be loved exactly, you know, as God intended. Yeah. Perfect. Is there anything else you'd like to add or share? Oh, goodness. I don't know. I have a lot of fun <laughs> with my job, though. <laughs> I, lo- I love my family yeah. over there. Anybody can come. It's it a great place like a to be. It sounds like a lot of fun, because I know that, especially at your church, you guys do a lot of, like, concerts and yeah. mm-hmm. charity, and that's Yeah, really we try special. to we try to do, um, we really are high on hospitality. Mm-hmm. So I've had people say, well, we have this cocktails in the courtyard thing yeah. on Friday nights twice a month. People will say, gosh, um, they sure are hospitable. Well, that's intentional. Yeah. You know, it, you should feel loved. 
That's what yeah. hospitality is, love, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So, um, no, I just, I just think it's um, an amazing, amazing thing to be asked to do. I'm very lucky to yeah. be asked mm-hmm. to do this job and have, have these people to lead. So. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much for coming. You're welcome. This has been fun. Thanks for having me. Of course. We are the women of GLI, and we will see you on the next episode.